cross, amazing. Religious people cannot tolerate this. Religious cults cannot tolerate or even accept that Jesus finished it. <laughs> religious cults and religious spirits are trembling when we use this against them. When Jesus said it is finished, religious spirits, they don't like that. Because see, religion is always about power and control. Religious spirits, they demand something from you. Religious spirits, they tell you, you must be this in order to please. You see what I mean? You follow me? So the reason I wanted to hop on here, guys, I had yet another Amish bishop reach out trying to convince me that Amish, not all Amish is the way he put it, are bad people that are cults. And I said, well, I, under, I already understand that. I almost always try to say in my videos that not all Amish are bad. Not all Amish are cults. But I said the smile and the friendliness and waving at everybody, that's a put on. Behind closed doors, there's a lot of darkness. Well, well, what do you mean? I said, well, I grew up Amish, as you know. I already know the darkness. I already know the rejection. I already know the shunning. That if you are not Amish, you're going to hell. I heard that with my own ears. So don't try to give me other garbage. So he was really trying to convince me. And, and he realized real quick, I was using nothing but this against him. These guys that try to silence me, one thing I've realized is when I use the very words of God and not my own, they tremble and they run. They can't tolerate it. They can't tolerate God's truth. So the Amish bishop was trying to slap me on the hand <laughs> and uh, it wasn't working. Hey guys, I already, under I already understand. There's a lot of good Amish out there. I'm not saying all Amish are bad. I know there's a lot of good hearted Amish people that want to do what is right. They hate evil just as much as I do. But I am simply exposing the evil, the wrongs that are in these cults. And I call them a cult when they are a cult. The ones that put their faith in Christ for salvation, they're not a cult. And I told him that. I said, but I want you to hear a verse. And he, he stayed on the phone longer than any other bishop, I think, that ever tried to get me to be silenced and tell me to shut up. I read to him Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 5, where it says these words. This is what the Lord says. Cursed is the one who trusts in man. <laughs> Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who draws strength from mere flesh, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. Well, we follow the Lord, he said. I said, no, you don't. I said, I was told I must honor my father and your mother and do what they taught from their forefathers in order to please God. I said, so how is that following Jesus? That's following mere flesh. Uh, hello? I said, cursed is the one who trusts in man, who draws strength from mere flesh. I'm not following flesh. I said, I'm following Jesus because Jesus said in Matthew 10, 37, if you love father, mother, brother, sister, more than me, you're not worthy of me. If you don't pick up your cross and follow me, you're not worthy of me. See, I was using scripture and he didn't like it. So this bishop starts really raising his voice and getting angry. And at one point I said, sir, I'm not yelling at you. And I certainly don't need you be yelling at me. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I'm calm here. I'm at peace. I follow this. I follow the word of God. I said, why are you, why are you getting so stirred up for well, you're making us look bad. I said, I'm not making you look bad. I said, the Bible itself exposes you religious hypocrites. The Bible itself is exposing your nonsense. That's why you're calling me and trying to silence me. Because I'm exposing your evil, like Ephesians 5.11 says, where it talks about not having anything to do with the evil deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. I said, that is what me and Amish Rescue Mission is all about. We expose evil when we see it. Well, I hate evil too. I said, well, then why do you protect the pedophiles inside your Amish church? Well, we are God's church. We must protect each other. Oh, does that mean protect your pedophiles? Yeah, I think so. That's what you're doing. 
See, I had him in every corner that he tried to turn to try to convince me, and it wasn't working. Now, it only worked for me because I know this. If I didn't put on the full armor of God, the helmet of salvation, and the breastplate of righteousness, there's no way I would have stood a chance against the devil when he called me on the phone. I mean, I'm not judging. I mean, that's a religious demon, religious demon when they tried to silence us. And they, they want to keep that evil, that darkness in the church. The devil doesn't want to be exposed. And then I shared with him in Acts chapter 1, and I and verse 8. I said, sir, I want to read to you something. I follow the Holy Spirit. I pray in the Spirit. I worship and praise God in spirit and in truth. I will not sit there and sing the lope lead like we did in, in Sunday mornings or even in, in school mornings uh, and, and stretch out some fleshly written song. I said, I will tell you that I am following the Holy Spirit. He gives me my power and my strength. And then I read verse 8 of Acts chapter 1 to him. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. I said, sir, I'm his witness to the ends of the earth. Now, I'm not in Samaria. I'm not in Judea. I'm not in Jerusalem, but I'm in the United States of America. And I said, I'm right where God called me to be. And I, he, he promises me right here, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes up on you. I said, I have his power. I allow the Holy Spirit to teach me, be my teacher, my comforter, my everything. I pray to him. He guides me, leads me into all truth. I, that's why I have no use for darkness and religion and man-made forefathers is crap. <laughs> he was pretty well trembling. See, I'm pretty straightforward, guys. Most of you know that has been following me. I don't put up with no heresy. I'm all about truth in the Bible. So when these religious bishops reach out and try to silence me and they say all this stuff that I'm trying to make them look bad. I just go into the Word. The Word is so powerful, the Holy Spirit convicts their heart and they get angry. It's what it is. So then I read to him how it says, and you will be my witnesses. I am his witness and I will witness his truth. I, I can't witness, and I told him, I said, I can't witness the Amish, what I was taught, because it's not found in here. And he says, well, yeah, everything's aligned in the Bible. I said, no, 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 no. I said, do you have an ordinance? Well, yeah, our ordinance with the rules aligns with the Bible. I said, no, it don't. I said, what does it say in Colossians chapter 2, verse 14? It says, blotting out the handwritings of ordinances which were contrary to us and against us, nailing it to the cross. I said, sir, why does the cross offend you? He said, it doesn't offend us. Our ordinance is aligning with the Bible. I said, no, it ain't. Because you can't back up one scripture that says your rules and having a horse and buggy and a certain haircut and wearing Amish clothes is going to get you into heaven. It's not in the Bible. I said, you're going through that for salvation. Well, you, you can't claim that you, you are saved. I said, well, then not. now I know by you saying that you can't be saved, now I know you're not reading the Bible. I said, because my Bible says I can put my faith in Christ and the finished work of the cross for salvation. And I can know I'm sealed with the Holy Ghost. And let's just say the, the conversation will need to end right then. My friends, here's why I get on here. Not only to expose darkness and cults, but also to share the truth. I will never sit here, my friends, and tell you that you must do something that ain't found in this book. And I never want you to focus on Eli Yoder and follow me. But I want you to put your faith in Jesus Christ for salvation and believe in your heart that he died on the cross to forgive you your sins and that he rose again on the third day. I want you to follow Jesus, not me. See, prideful religious spirits will always demand you to follow them. We are the ones. You must be us to please God. I will never preach that way. I will preach that you must follow the truth. The truth shall set you free, John 8, 32. And I will point you to Jesus Christ because I will also stand in front of the Lord Jesus one day and be held accountable for everything that I have done on earth. And I do not want to be held accountable for making people follow me and veer them away from sound doctrine.
boy, there's going to be a special place, I believe, that is going to be extra hot for those that have deceived God's children away from the truth. Follow us. We're the ones. Follow us. We're the ones. And it's not even found in here. It's a disgrace. So I, I'm not, I'm actually encouraged. It actually gives me more power and strength in Christ. It encourages me when I get attacked. When, when they come up against me and try to silence me, that just shows me that I'm doing the right thing. That just shows me that I'm using the right word, the word of God, not my own. Because there's power. See, the enemy doesn't find anything else as a threat. He doesn't attack those cults because he's got them right where he wants them. He only attacks, uses religious people to attack the ones that are sticking with sound doctrine, the truth in the Bible. And that is why the devil uses religious minions to come up against those that are exposing them because they don't want to be exposed. And they accuse you all the time. The Bible says he's the, a liar and the father of all lies. And the Bible also says that Satan is the accuser of the, of the brethren. And that's what this satanic demon was doing, is accusing me of making them look bad. Well, I'm sure it does if you're covering up for pedophiles and protecting and forgiving the pedophiles inside the Amish church. I said, do you know, sir, that we at Amish Rescue Mission have Amish people, safe homes for Amish people that we are working with and they're willing to help in this area because they understand that there's a lot of darkness and a lot of evil and they hate evil like I do and they're Amish. And he says, well, where they're at? I can't tell you where they're at because if I tell you who they are and what community, they're gonna, you're gonna go after them. I can't tell you who they are. I can't tell you which state and which community they are. They work with us, they hate evil too. And I said, I, I'm asking you to repent. And he says, repent from what? I said, I'm asking you to repent from religion and from what your forefathers have always taught because it was handed down from Jacob Almond that started the Amish. I said, I want you to repent from that and trust and put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and believe that he, I already do, I already believe that. He said, he cut me off. And I said, well, if you truly believed that it was finished the way Jesus said, just before he hung his head and died, when he said it was finished, if you truly believe that, you would not be going about to establish your own self-righteousness. Well, well, we're not, we're not. Yeah, yeah, you are. If, if you didn't establish your own self-righteousness, you would have no rules. You would preach Jesus Christ crucified, that you can put your faith in him for salvation and believe in your heart. That, that's it, that's the gospel, that Jesus died, he finished it. Why are you living in the law of Moses? Why are you still sacrificing? I mean, he didn't like those things. Just thought of another verse before I wrap it up. See, see, these people have a lot of zeal in what they believe in. They're willing to die for those rules. They're willing to die to be Amish, okay? But here's what Paul said in Romans 10. He said, For I can testify in verse 2 of chapter 10. For I can testify about them that they are very zealous for God. But their zeal is not based on knowledge, biblical knowledge. Since they did not know the righteousness of God, hello? Since they did not know the righteousness of God and sought to establish their own righteousness. I told that bishop, I said, I just, Jesus wants you to repent, put your faith in him, and go through Jesus Christ and his righteousness for salvation. I said, your own righteousness, my Eli Yoder self-righteousness, is as filthy as a rag. The Bible says so. So I can't do my own to try to get there. I said, see, I do good things and I love my neighbor as myself because I am born again. I am saved. I have the fruits of the Spirit. But I can't depend on my own self-righteousness for salvation. I said, a dog barks because he's a dog. He doesn't bark to become a dog, does he? No, he said. I said, see, I'm a Christian. I'm born again. I'm saved, so I do those things. But I'm not doing them to become saved. It, it just seemed like nothing I was saying was really sticking. He just kept, kept getting more angry and more angry and accusing me of other stuff. I've seen your videos. And then at one, at one point, I told this bishop, I said, 
So you're, you're, you're really accusing me here. You're, you're throwing all this stuff that you saw in my videos. Are you allowed to have a phone? Well, no, no. I, okay, so tell me, how are you watching me? Well, we have English drivers. We have uh, people that tell us about you. I said, but you're still watching it, right? Yeah, and, and that's when he's ready to get off the phone. <laughs> he's watching me. He's probably sneaking around the phone. That's what these religious minions do. They sneak around these phones and they keep an eye on me and others that are exposing them. But yet, if if the other Amish probably knew he was watching me and had a, had his own phone, he'd probably get excommunicated too. Man, I'll tell you what. It just, so since they did not know the righteousness of God in verse 3, and uh, they sought to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. That's what's happening. When you go about to establish your own righteousness and you don't have faith in the finished work of the cross, then is when you get offended by the, what happened on this cross. Religious spirits that want to have power and control over others. We are the ones. If you're not Amish, you go to hell. They are offended by what was finished on the cross because they are establishing their own righteousness to hopefully please God. So before I hung up, I, I knew he was getting ready to just hang up on me. I said, so my friend, I got to ask you, where do you think you're going if you died today? You know what he told me? The same thing my mom told me. The same thing the Amish bishop in my Kenton, Ohio community told me. He said, well, I hope I get to heaven. Just hope. I said, did you know Eli Yoder knows where he's going if I die today, took my last breath? Oh, you can't, you can't know. I said, well, I read my Bible. I, I, I know. I said, why do you just hope? Well, we, we work really hard. And we do a good job uh, in, in the Amish of keeping our, ourselves aligned with the Bible. I said, oh, do you? With all your rules? Well, yeah, you got to have an ordinance, he said. So when we do all these things, we are hoping that God would allow us to get into heaven. Uh, okay, I said, you're not reading the Bible then. Well, yeah, we, we, we read the Bible. I said, well, you can't be. I said, my Bible says that we go through Jesus Christ and his righteousness for salvation. I said, my own works and rules are filthy as rags. I said, how can you sit there and do all of that hard work, sir, and then just hope? You don't even know if you're going to heaven. You just hope? Well, yeah, we have a great hope because we're Amish, he said, and we do all, we, we're, we're separate from the world. You know, we're not part of the world. We're Amish. So we have great hopes of getting in. I said, that's just a false hope. <laughs> that's just a false hope. I said, I know, I'm at peace knowing where I'm going when I take my last breath. I don't have to just hope because I put my faith in Jesus Christ for salvation. Matter of fact, just, just as I think about that, I should have shared this one with him. I should have shared uh, Romans 10, 9, where it says these words, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. Not justified by rules. Not an ordinance. It doesn't say that. It's not found in here. It's by believing and accepting Christ. Believe that believe are justified and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. Verse 11 says, as scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. Sadly, when they do their own self-righteous rules, they will be put to shame on that day in Matthew 7, 21, 22, somewhere in there. It says on that day, many, and this is where I feel sad. I get a knot in my stomach every, every time I think about that verse. I want to plead with Jesus to just forgive them because he loves them too. That's why Jesus hung, before he hung his head and died, he said, Father, please forgive them for they know not what they do. And they don't know what they're doing. That's why we got to pray for them. Because they simply don't see it. They don't understand it. But sadly, the Bible doesn't lie. And sadly, I get a knot in my stomach when I read that verse in Matthew 7 where he, Jesus said, on that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, have we not? Have we not done this? Have we not? 
done one of many, many wonderful works in my name. And he's going to say, where do you come from? I do not know you, you workers of iniquity. That's a sad feeling I get when I think of that. Boy, the devil sure has many people in bondage, don't he? I get so angry and mad at the devil for using religion to hold people bondage. So many cults, not just my culture, the Amish, but you see so many cults all around the world that are living under this power and authority. They're in bondage. And all they would have to do is read the truth. Why? I'm so ticked off at the devil for that. Church of God restoration. Mormons. I mean, there's so much that comes to mind. Jehovah's Witness. They've been reaching out. Those, uh, what's the other one? You got the Mennonites, you got the Amish, you got the Hutterites. That's the one I was thinking of. The Hutterites are dealing with the same thing. They have colonies of Hutterites. Everybody's connected together. They're keeping tabs on everybody. That's not freedom. That's bondage. You see how the devil's always using religion, power, and control over others. And it's so sad to see what's happening. And people fall for it. People are listening to, like when I spoke with my, my brother Perry, I, I was talking to my brother Perry one day and I shared some scripture with him and he was writing them down. I said, please read those scriptures in Colossians, Galatians, and I gave him Corinthians something, Romans, and he's writing it down. And he says, now where'd you say that can be found? See, the reason he was asking that is because he didn't know they depend on the bishop and the elders to interpret this book. They don't read it for themselves. Why does John chapter 8, 30, verse 31 and 32 say, If you know the truth, the truth shall set you free. Because if you know the truth, the devil can no longer hold you bondage under religious cults. You're free. Those that become free and read the truth and get saved and got born again, they leave those communities because they're free. They follow Christ rather than man. What did I say in Jeremiah? Cursed are those that follow man? Let's go back and read that. I started the video with that. Jeremiah 17. It's very powerful. By the way, I think that's what made the Amish bishop when he reached out to me. I think that's what made him matter, matter than anything. But I had to use scripture rather than my own words. There's power in the word of God. And this is what made him matter than anything. Ma or Jeremiah 17, 5. This is what the Lord says. Not Eli Yoder. The Lord says this. This is what the Lord says, Cursed is the one who trusts in man, or bishop, shall I say, who draws strength from mere flesh and whose heart turns away from the Lord. Now, they don't think they're turning away from the Lord. They think they're the only ones making it, but they have turned from the Lord. And they have followed what their forefathers handed down to them. And they think they're going to somehow be rewarded for that. And there might just be a little hope Maybe just a crack of the door will be opened to heaven where we can slip right on in there. And it's just a false hope. So guys, why is this book not enough? It really just bothers me to, it, it makes my blood boil, my friends, when I see what the devil is doing by using partial truth, just like he did in the Garden of Eden. He was using partial truth to try to deceive Eve and it worked probably 75% truth that her eyes would be open. Sure, it sure was. She knew good from evil. She had knowledge. I mean, see, religious spirits will use partial truth. Sounds good. It tickles your ears. And Timothy says in the last days, many will be, their ears will be itching to hear what they want to hear. And that's what's happened. But yet, if they got born again with the Holy Spirit and trusted and have it, had faith in Christ, well, they wouldn't have no use for religion. They would run as fast as they could away from that religious garbage and never listen to it again. So, I would never ever want any of you on YouTube, Facebook, or TikTok to follow me because of who I am. I want you to follow the truth that will set you free, and I want you to put your faith, not in Eli Yoder, but in the cross, the finished work of the cross, and follow Jesus rather than me. I don't want to be held accountable for you following me. I don't want you to be deceived. I will be held accountable if I deceive any of you. I want you to follow the truth. I want you to pick up your cross 
and follow Jesus Christ for salvation. Not Eli Yoder. I can't save you. Jesus saves. Y'all have a blessed day. I love you all. And God bless you.